Okay, so this is not the traditional, oh, let's talk about Seth Jones kind of video, because we're going to go over the teams that are interested, and the teams that seem likely to come ahead, and the teams that all the insiders are saying, oh yeah, they're the ones that are in here, and they're the ones that are making the biggest push here. It's not Chicago, it's not Philadelphia, it's not those teams. We're not going to be talking about those teams here in this video today. Instead, we're going over some other teams that are apparently, according to certain NHL insider sources, in the mix as well. And they're not necessarily teams that I think most people would think about when it comes to this entire ordeal because their names haven't really been thrown around there like the Phillies and the Chicagos have, for example, with Seth Jones. But before we get into any of that, hey... Just got to get the introductions out of the way, just in case you don't know what's going on here. Seth Jones is a big right-handed defenseman for the Columbus Blue Jackets. He plays a lot of minutes. He plays a ton. And the net of opinions that people feel for this guy, it ranges all over the place. Some people think he's this big, number one, minutes-eating, offensively capable, just overall solid defenseman. Others think he's a liability. It really depends on who you ask, but overall, the advanced analytics aren't really on Jones' side this year, nor are really the viewings of him, especially if you compare it to previous seasons. But at the end of the day, Seth Jones is a young ish kind of defender who is indeed on the trade block. And we've had all these rumors coming about that he doesn't want to sign an extension for next season, which is leading to trade chatter because the Columbus Blue Jackets now have no real choice but to start shopping him and trying to see what they could get in the trading market for him. And so, we go over the list of teams that everybody is saying could be involved, as we noted, Philadelphia, Chicago, the Kings, the Avalanche, name whichever one you want to talk about. Aaron Portsland had a few names listed on a piece he wrote on The Athletic the other day. But today we're going over onto Florida Hockey Now. This is a new edition of their Off the Record series of articles, where they go over and they take a look at what they're hearing from the NHL insiders, and they publish it in a piece that is considered to being off the record. Now, we're going over onto Spectres Hockey to read what is said here because it is paid for material, so I will leave a link in the description. If you do have a Hockey Now subscription, you can go ahead and read that on your own. But if you don't have a paid subscription service, then hey, Spectres Hockey has your back. Jimmy Murphy of Boston Hockey Now cited an NHL source claiming the Toronto Maple Leafs were among the clubs interested in Jones from the beginning. He also believes Detroit Red Wings GM Steve Iserman could be up to something. And you know what? When it comes to this, these two teams are the ones that you don't really see people talking about too often when it comes to a Seth Jones trade scenario. As we noted, it's Chicago, Philadelphia, Dallas, LA, Colorado, and all these other teams that are usually involved in these talks when people like to bring up Seth Jones. But Toronto and Detroit? Hmm. Now that one's interesting for me. Let's go over each of these teams and their situations here, how a Seth Jones acquisition could help their team, how it could hamper their team, and the overall long-term implications as to how things could play out should a trade go down. Now, Seth Jones, as we noted, he's a big boy, 6'4", 209 pounds, 26 years old, making $5.4 million until the end of next season. He will need a contract extension after that, and we don't really have a ballpark as to where that next contract's AAV is going to lie. Based off a of reputation, you would think that this guy might get a little bit more than what he has right now. So for a team that is potentially acquiring him with the hopes of signing him longer term, it really is something you need to consider, especially when you're also considering the decline or the production and the way he has been playing, which is very polarizing, as we have noted, depending on who you ask. Toronto is in a position where they do have some cap problems, and we do kind of know this when it comes to the way their team is assembled, three ten-plus million dollar players and a salary cap structure that has them debating as to whether or not Alex Kerfoot, who's making 3.5 on a good deal, honestly, is worth it keeping around. You have a whole bunch of UFAs to re-sign, and we don't know how exactly Zach Hyman is going to play into this mix as well, so who knows on that front how things are going to go down. But when it comes to a Seth Jones potential trade to Toronto, Probably the first thing that pops into my mind is the same thing that pops into your mind too, because it's been highlighted on, for example, the Sportsnet broadcast by Kevin Bieksa, 
Some people elsewhere in the media with prominent social media followings and overall reputation have said stuff about this as well. If you're going to go out there and acquire a Seth Jones if you're Toronto, oh, you're going to be trading Mitch Marner for him, right? Because if you want to get a big name minutes eating defenseman like Jones, you got to give up value. And what better way to give up value and also free up cap space by trading away Mitch Marner? I know that's the first thing you were thinking about when you heard about Seth Jones to Toronto, wasn't it? Because it's the one narrative that a whole bunch of people in the media love to shove down our throats over here. But honestly, to me personally, I just don't think it's gonna go down that way, you know? Like, sure, Kyle Dubas might go out there and he might trade Marner, he might do this, he might do that, but are you really winning a Marner trade if you're sending him away for Seth Jones? Like, you'd have to acquire another top six forward that can go in and fill in that roster spot that Marner leaves behind. Because are you gonna expect a Nick Robertson or a Rodion Amirov or whoever to come in and fill that role for you? Sorry, but that's not possible. I think it was Will Scouching who said this on an episode of Scouching Live, but believe me, if you trade Marner for Seth Jones, Leafs fans are going to be wanting Marner back in like two weeks. Firstly, because Marner at his best is a legitimately good NHL player, and Seth Jones is just Seth Jones. You know? We noted before how his reputation was like, oh, he could be a Norris caliber guy a few years ago, but nowadays he's not, and he's playing worse this year than he has been before, so... Is there really a positive enough value to say that a Mitch Marner is justified in a trade like this? Hey, if you're trading away Seth Jones and you're getting Mitch Marner, I mean, Columbus probably does it, right? Having Mitch Marner set up Patrick Laine, maybe try to play him back at center because you guys need a center there. He was a center in the London Knights system, so why not try it like that? Either way, though, I don't see it going down that way, mostly just because the values and how things align don't really make out, in my opinion, especially if you're talking about Mish Marner, because that's what everybody seems to be talking about when it comes to trading a Seth Jones here. But for the other team involved that is cited in the Hockey Now piece as to potentially wanting Jones, it's the Detroit Red Wings. And we already made a video talking about Seth Jones and Larkin, because that was a trade idea proposed on a Sportsnet article that I just completely called out and said it was like, yeah, you're not using Larkin as just a trade piece. You're not talking about Seth Jones being traded to Detroit and just casually saying, oh, let's just put Larkin here, you know? Like, Larkin is super important to this team. Maybe not in terms of the talent evaluation, but in terms of the heart and soul and what he means. He's the team's captain for a reason. You're not just casually saying, okay, trade Larkin because we're going to get Seth Jones or whatever. It's not going to work out like that, and that's why I called out that Sportsnet piece saying that if you're going to see a trade of Seth Jones to Detroit, I'd be very surprised if a Dylan Larkin of all people was involved. But either way, though, the article does say that they believe that Stevie Y could potentially be up to something, and to that I say, you know... I just wouldn't really be surprised if he was thinking about it, because we've noted this the entire time, every time Steve Eiserman has popped up in rumors and whatnot, he is always trying to go out there, scouring the market, seeing what's available, and seeing what could benefit his team. If there's any form of a trade rumor, of a player in the market, or whatever, you can bet your behind that Stevie Y has, at the very least, checked in and thought about it. Not because he's interested in everybody that is out there, but he's analyzing every trade, every potential scenario, and he's saying, could this help out my team? Every guy has come out here. Patrick Laine, Pierre-Luc Dubois, we had the entire thing going around with, I believe it was Tony D'Angelo, yeah. Steve Eiserman has gotten his name involved there, not because he wants everybody out there in the market, but just because he's wanting to see if it would work. Which is why we had the rumors as to whether or not Laine could go to Detroit, Pierre-Luc Dubois, whether or not they would be good fits for him, and whether or not they wanted Tony D'Angelo. So, for Eiserman to maybe be involved here... It's kind of a copy-paste kind of situation over here to the point where it's like, yeah, okay, Steve Eiserman could do something, but that's because it's Steve Eiserman, and he's always looking to do whatever it is to help out his hockey team, even if it means helping out a rival club or taking on some extra salary. You saw how much the Red Wings were reeling and dealing this previous trade deadline. The only reason David Savard is even on the Lightning right now, potentially winning a cup tonight, is because Steve Eiserman and his crew got involved. He's always doing stuff, and so for Seth Jones, if there's a conversation to be made about a big-name, star power defenseman being available on the market, yeah, like, of course, Steve Eiserman is going to be in there because Steve Eiserman is in there all the time. So whether or not that means he gets acquired by Detroit, 
I don't know, maybe there's a trade to be facilitated here where Detroit takes on some salary to maybe send Jones to a better team, and then they'll decide later on if he gets a contract extension there. I don't know, I'm just kind of spitting over here. But for Toronto and Detroit, talk to me in the comments what you think about this entire conversation here, whether or not they would be good fits for Seth Jones, whether or not Iserman could do something, whether or not a Mitch Marner trade could even be there, because I think it was Kevin Bieksa talking about this, you would want to trade a Marner for a Seth Jones-like kind of guy. I might be misquoting, I might be misremembering, I'm not really too sure. Somebody please correct me in the comment section below if he's the one who said that. But talk to me as well what you think, just in general. I hope you enjoyed this Vinicius Rolls 99. And, bye.